morning, everyone. Good to see everybody this morning. Uh, I am so thankful for the weather the past couple days. I don't know about you, but it has been amazing to, to experience that, so that's a blessing this morning. Uh, Pastor is uh, up north this weekend, so I'm going to be kind of running the show a little bit and excited for that, grateful for that opportunity. Uh, so good to see everybody this morning. A couple announcements before we get to uh, the call to worship. Four o'clock tonight is the ladies' Bible study. So um, if you've been coming and being a part of that, it's going on again tonight. So we'll hope to see you there. Um, and then at 5.30, we have Awana um, and the biblical citizenship class as well uh, is, is going on today. And then at 6.30, I'll be back and uh, do a youth group tonight. So um, that is kind of what we have planned for the evening. And we also have an announcement from Kathy this morning, an update on Operation Christmas Child. Just want to let you know if you don't have a box, there are still a few in the library. And the collection, it starts November 14th, so your box needs to be here by Sunday, November 13th, so that we can collect them all and take them. They do ask for a donation, but we don't need a donation because we always get money from Vacation Bible School. All the um, offerings that the children bring for Vacation Bible School goes towards the donation for Operation Christmas Child. So fill your box, bring it in by the 13th, and I will get them to the Collection Center. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And, uh I love that that program. We at, the, at my parents' church where I grew up, and I think every church I've really ever been to, we have um, we've done that, and it's a really cool thing. It's so fun to pack the boxes. We did it at my high school actually. Um, filled the gym with boxes. So definitely encourage you to be a part of that. It's it's very cool, and uh, if you've ever seen any of the videos of the kids getting the boxes and opening those up, it's a very cool thing to see. Uh, we are going to open up this morning with our call to worship um, from Psalm 42, verses 1 to 5, if you would read with me this morning. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all the day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my, my salvation, salvation and my God. You bow your heads with me this morning as we open in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the weather that we've uh, we've been able to experience the past couple days. And um, as we look forward and, and look forward to moving into um, you know the later fall and even into the winter, um, we just thank you for everything that you've done this past summer. Um, we'll have a chance to, to talk about that and, rem and reminisce and um, remember the blessings that you've, you've given us this summer later on. And we just want to thank you for those. Um, and especially as the weather kind of reminds us of summer, we're reminded of everything that you did um, this past season. And we are grateful for it. Uh, we pray that you would be with um, anybody this morning who needs you. Uh, pray that you'd be with Pastor up north and um, that time of respite and uh, just help that to be, you know, very um, relaxing for him and, and come around him and um, make your presence known. And uh, for anybody else, Lord, we just ask that uh, this morning you'd be near to them and um, you'd bring everybody who needs it comfort. We know there are a lot of unspoken requests um, always, so we pray for those, um, but we also thank you for everything that you've done. Um, Pray your blessing on the service this morning and the chance to hear your word. And uh, pray that you would be with me as I bring that and that you would speak through me. Um, 
and give us a good service this morning and um, a, a good week this coming week and um, help us to remember that we need to lean on you for our strength, hunger, and thirst for your righteousness um, and always keep you uh, number one. We love you, Lord, and again, pray your blessing on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. and flexible. And um, so um, I'm, I'm going to uh, lead us in uh, uh, songs and worship this morning. And so if you would please stand. We're going to sing as the deer and then we're going to go right into shout to the Lord.
stolen Chris's mic, and you will see why. Uh, so I mentioned in my prayer this morning that we were have, going to have a chance to just share some blessings from the summer and talk a little bit about and share um, what God has done over the summer. And uh, because of the weather this weekend, I think it kind of got me thinking about the summer and reminiscing. And for me, it was an incredible summer with just full of blessings. And I know that um, there are several things that the Lord did uh, for you this summer as well. So last week, I believe it was last week, we uh, shared some prayer requests. This morning, I'd love to uh, pass the mic around if, if you'd like to share and just share something that happened this summer um, that was a blessing for you or even earlier in the fall. Um, so we're just going to enter into a time of, of testimony a little bit and sharing. Uh, so if you would like to share, just let me know. Raise your hand. I'll come and, and give you the mic and, and let you share something that's on your heart um, that the Lord blessed you with this summer. As I thought this morning, um, one thing for me was simply, my hip doesn't hurt. <laughs> and, you know, still has some spikes now and then, but was able to get a hip replacement in June. And prior to that, it was like every step I had to think, okay, what else can I do on my way to the kitchen so that I don't have to get back up? <laughs> Okay, really? Do I really want that book that's in the other room? Or no? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to get up. But um, got through hip surgery, and you know, it's night and day. So I praise the Lord for the healing that that that's brought, and just how good He has been with that. Quite a few trips this year going out of town and visiting family and having a couple cruises. But last week I spent in Texas visiting my sister. And I had a good time. But Texas is big and dry and coming in on Friday on the airplane and looking down at all the beautiful colors here in Michigan was breathtaking. And I was so glad to be home. But to look at fall's not my favorite time of year because I don't like winter. But it's so beautiful here, and God has really blessed us with a gorgeous, gorgeous landscape. And just, I just praise Him for the color and the ability to see the color that we have. Anyone else would like to share this morning?
are very thankful for that as well, without a doubt. Anyone else? You know, I'm very thankful for family. Um, a lot of times it could go, have gone really wrong, but I'm still thankful that we are a knit group, and um, I love them all, in spite of them. <laughs> or in spite of me, you know, and um, I'm very thankful for that. And I'm thankful for Bo that he has come here and been with the, well, you know, my great grands, I love them, so I'm really thankful for that. I'll share something too. I've mentioned it a couple times, but uh, this summer a huge blessing for me was getting to take your great grands and uh, and the, the Hancock boys, Andy and Braden as well, up to Hiawatha. And thinking back on that now is um, an even bigger blessing, just because there's been some difficulties with um, with Hiawatha, and some changes have happened now. And so to know that uh, we were able to do that this summer and, and um, go up there, and, and still will be able to certainly, but. Um, just looking back on that is a, is a huge blessing as it's, uh, there's been some difficulties there and some trials for sure. So uh, that has been a, a huge blessing and, and just being here um, and part of this church over the summer is, is another huge blessing. Um, absolutely. And I'm thankful for all of you for um, allowing me to be here and um, welcoming me so, so strongly. And it's coming up now uh, in November, it'll be a year that I've been here. So uh, that is, it's crazy for me to think about that, and a, and a huge blessing, absolutely. Anybody else this morning, and then we'll end in, in prayer and move on to the next songs. I want to read. 
rejoice for him, and I do rejoice for him. Yet, uh, there's kind of an overwhelming loss and grief that breaks Bobby back. All the people of my family that I have lost, and I just keep thinking, oh, soon, soon. And I remember uh, when my husband I said to him, the last thing I said to him was, I'll see you in a minute. Because to him, it'll be a blinking of the eye to me, maybe years. But I'm longing for that blink of the eye. I'm not suicidal. I mean, I don't want you to think that. <laughs> this morning, I just seem to be so aware of heaven and the joys that will have there, the presence of the Lord. I mean, he'll be right there, and we'll be able to see him plainly. Oh. No, see, I probably have to ask Sarah to get off my chair. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. And we're glad you're here this morning. Um, and it is, it's, it's interesting, and uh, I think it can be difficult that often, you know, blessings do go hand in hand with, um, with pain. Um, but that is a, an amazing truth of, of the Lord, of our Father, is that He is able to bring blessings even in that. Um, and we are thankful for that. Um, I'm so thankful to have heard everyone this morning and um, very grateful. And I love what you, what's on your heart this morning of looking ahead to um, paradise and when everything is perfect, there is no more pain. It's all blessing. Um, that's, uh, I can tell there's a hunger and thirst um, from you to, to be in that place and uh, that's that's what that's what it's all about is, is keeping our eyes focused on that even in the midst of, of dark times absolutely so thank you for sharing and everyone thank you for sharing and um, let's close this this time of, of testimony of, of blessing and prayer and then uh, we'll sing a couple more songs Lord I just thank you for um, everyone who shared this morning. Um, getting the chance to hear people's hearts is, is a blessing in and of itself. And we recognize this morning that um, there are a lot of blessings that you've given us, um, but that those often, you know, do come from uh, and, and come out of pain. And sometimes to, to see the blessings, there are uh, things that we go through that make us more aware of those. Um, of those blessings. We thank you that you're with us in both of those things. Uh, in the trials and the valleys and the mountaintops, you are always there. Uh, I ask that we would always keep a focus on what is to come uh, on a day where there is no pain, there is no more suffering, we're reunited with loved ones. Help us to remember that, to believe that, to run the race set before us, our eyes on that prize, um, forgetting what's behind, straining towards what's ahead, as Paul talks about. We pray that, we ask that that would be our mission, that that would be what we constantly keep in the forefront of our minds. And we ask that you would continue to be with us through the trials, through the valleys, as we know that you are, but also remind us and show us blessing and remind us of what your son has done that has allowed us um, to be with you someday in perfection. We love you, Lord. We thank you again for this time, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
one week, uh, the person in Bolton might get to last week. Summer has been a blessing, you know. Um, first off, uh, being able to work alongside Rev Point in VBS, that was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed it, and uh, we saw a lot of kids come through, um, newer faces in leadership positions, newer faces in the kids, and that was that was a huge blessing. And then at the end of VBS. I received a, an unexpected blessing three weeks early, my grandson. And um, I, I have three beautiful grandchildren. Um, oldest is oh, fast becoming a teenager. And um, I get to watch her grow into a young woman on a daily basis. Um, but slight prayer request just Remember, Ricky, um, I had the dates mixed up. It is actually Tuesday, the 25th, which is his, uh, his sleep study. So if you would keep him in prayer, I appreciate that. Okay, on that note, let's go back to songs and here I am to worship. We're going to stand again.
thank you, Chris, for stepping in and stepping up. Bit of a different day with a couple people out, but uh, that was awesome. I was super blessed by those songs, and we're super thankful for Chris's talents in that area. Um, well, good morning, everybody. Again, uh, I've been up here a couple times now, but it's good to see everyone. Um, and um, a privilege and an honor again to be up here and, and getting the chance to um, bring a word to you. So I'm very thankful <coughs> for that opportunity. I hope you're doing well this morning and uh, mentioned it a couple times, but I've been, been enjoying the weather. Um, it's crazy to think about, but we are today in the last full week of October. There's not another full week, so this is the last full week and then we're into November already. Um, which to me is insane and it seems like the summer and even the fall is kind of flying by um, and I know that pastor likes the snow right I've yeah. heard him talk about that a couple times yeah. I do not I am not uh, ready for that trial in my life and it's coming uh, so not excited about that but it has been a wonderful summer and uh, hearing everybody share this morning um, different ways that the Lord has blessed over the summer is is amazing and I'm thankful for that um, but it's fall now and fall's even moving quickly um, but it has been a, a great blessing to get back into kind of a rhythm and a routine uh, with the youth especially over the summer lots of people lots of families traveling vacationing things like that um, didn't always have as many kids coming to youth group but now we're kind of back into a, a routine with that and having a core group of kids come every week uh, and that's awesome it's great to to have them back and to kind of be you know seeing the same kids every week and, and getting a chance to minister to them is is, is amazing um, we really see a lot of kids regularly come now usually kind of uh, anywhere from usually over 10 kids uh, that are coming to youth group every night and we're so thankful for that and i gave an update of what's been going on in youth group a couple weeks ago at the business meeting but to kind of start out today and then roll into what we're going to be talking about, I want to kind of give uh, just a couple things um, for you to be aware of with what's going on there because it's been it's been wonderful. Um, so I want to I want to make you aware of kind of a couple things. So uh, one of the things that's made me really excited is just like um, the transition to sharing the building with Revelation Point, just like that has gone really well for the church as a whole. I mean, it's been very smooth. Uh, pastor talks about that all the time that it's just been like wow, you know, there's hardly been a hiccup uh, Which is an amazing thing, but it's the same way for the youth group That has been a huge blessing for us and we have kids um, from Revelation Point coming to the youth group now um, And it's been going so well. Like I said, we often see um, Over 10 kids one week. I think we had like 14 uh, come between our church and, and Revelation Point um, and our kids and their kids are starting to kind of become friends, uh, form relationships, and, and, and it, that's really cool to see. Um, we don't look at ourselves now as two different youth groups or two different churches. It's one youth group, and that has been amazing and such a blessing to watch. Um, I'm very thankful to the Lord for that. Another really awesome thing, we mentioned VBS um, happening over the summer. I think Chris mentioned that. Uh, that was an incredible time, but from that, something that's really cool is I led the junior high adventures group for VBS. So some of the older kids, um, and we did separate things than the rest of VBS. So we went all over, all over the place. We went to the fire station um, one day and got a tour of that. We went to the park one day and had an outdoor lesson. We did a um, an egg drop challenge one day where. Kids had to build things around eggs so they wouldn't crack when they fell. Um, it was a really fun time. I had a, I had a blast doing that uh, with them. But one thing that is really cool from that is that two of those kids who were part of that group, um, who I met for the first time at VBS, uh, now regularly come to our youth group. Which, to me, really, that is you know the the mission of VBS is to get kids to come and have a great time, but then also be back. And so seeing that has been an amazing thing, um, and that's been wonderful to see. And I've really started to see these kids grow in their faith um, and start to hunger and thirst after the Lord, after his righteousness, 
you know, asking me things about daily devotions. Um, what does that look like? You know, should I get a Bible? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, what, is, what does that look like for us um, to kind of pursue the Lord in our life? And that's been an incredible thing to see. Uh, they, you know, are craving more knowledge, more time with Him, a stronger relationship with Him. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I've, I've mentioned it a couple times now. You might have caught it a couple times in our songs and in the call to worship, but hunger and thirsting for righteousness and for the Lord. That's what uh, we're going to be taking a look at today. So I'm very excited to dive into that this morning um, and get a closer look at what that exactly means, what that should look like for our life to hunger and thirst for righteousness um, as we look at uh, another beatitude from the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and that's what uh, we're going to be taking a look at. So last time I was up here and brought a message, we talked about blessed are the peacemakers. Um, and this morning we're going to be talking about blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So before we jump in, uh, I'm going to pray one more time, um, and then we will get to our main passage for the day. Lord, um, it's been a great morning already, hearing testimony, hearing blessings, um, and we thank you for that. We thank you for um, what you're doing in the, the youth group, and um, I just thank you for the opportunity to be a part of that. I feel I'm along for the ride, and you're doing I mean, you are, you are doing all of those things. You're working in their hearts. It's nothing that I've done, um, but that you've done through me. So this morning, as we look into what it looks like to hunger and thirst after you, um, I pray that we walk away with an understanding of that and a passion for that, um, and maybe see some things in a new way um, and pursue, pursue you in new ways as well. Uh, we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, uh, we're going to be in, our main passage is Matthew 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, verse 6. So if you have your Bible, feel free to open to that. Um, that is going to be our main passage. We're gonna, I'm going to kind of throw a lot of different scripture passages at you this morning. But that is where we are mainly, um, what we're mainly going to be talking about. So Matthew 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. So you don't have to answer this or raise your hand um, if you don't want to, but have you ever been really, really, really hungry for something? I mean, stomach growling every 30 seconds, you got to eat right now. Um, I know I've done that, absolutely. If you, I, I often forget to eat breakfast. Um, I just don't eat breakfast, and then that's really bad because by the time of lunch, I'm just extremely hungry, uh, and that's never good. So um, that's something that, that I do all the time. Or have you ever been crazy, crazy thirsty, just extremely thirsty? All you can think about is getting a huge uh, gulp of ice water. That's something that I do all the time. Um, I think about, especially when I was a little bit younger, uh, playing outside in the summer, and in the yard or wherever, and um, just getting extremely thirsty. And the best thing uh, when that would happen was <coughs> running over to the garden hose and drinking straight out of the garden hose. There's no water like it in the world. I don't know what it is, but that, that water is incredible. So that's, when I think of being super thirsty, that's where I put myself is, is, is you know, outside getting sweaty in, in the summertime and running over to the, the hose and just drinking from it for like five minutes. Um, that was the best. So when Jesus says that we should hunger and thirst for righteousness, because it is Jesus um, speaking on the, in the Sermon on the Mount, speaking the Beatitudes, that is the kind of enthusiasm. That's the kind of desire that he's talking about, that need to eat right now kind of feeling. That, that I gotta get a drink, I gotta go drink from the water hose, straight from the source kind of feeling, that type of thirst. That's the type of hunger and thirst that he calls us to have for righteousness, for his kingdom. That is what he's talking about. So when I was thinking about this morning how to better demonstrate uh, the type of hunger that we're supposed to have for the kingdom of God and righteousness, I had a couple ideas. Uh, so the first one I thought of we could have some volunteers come up for a pie-eating contest. 
right up here. That that'd be pretty fun, right? No, I don't. I don't know. I uh, I <laughs> I thought about that briefly, and then I thought that might get a little messy. I don't think we would have anyone want to volunteer to come on up here either. Um, so I kind of ruled that out. That went out pretty quickly, though. That would have been extremely entertaining to watch. Um, so then I thought, okay, maybe show a video of an eating contest. Um, has anyone in here ever heard of a guy by the name of Joey Chestnut, by any chance? Yep. <laughs> you know what's coming. I'm not going to show it, thankfully. But So Joey Chestnut is a guy who holds the, the Guinness World Record for hot dog eating. Joey Chestnut, in 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 1-0, holds the record for eating 76 hot dogs and their buns in 10 minutes. So I was looking at videos of this and thought about showing that this morning, but I think some people might have gotten sick. Um, it is disgusting <laughs> to watch him do that. He's red in the face, he's sweating. I mean, he's just, it, I was like, no, we're not, I'm not gonna go there. Uh, so I finally did, I think, find the perfect illustration of this type of hunger, this type of almost obsession um, that we're called to have for the Lord, for his kingdom, for righteousness. Uh, so this man that I'm going to show you in just a second here is also a world record holder, but it's a much more palatable video. We're not actually seeing him shovel things in his mouth. Um, but I would love to watch this this morning and see the type of hunger uh, that I'm talking about for the kingdom of God. I have eaten 32,340 Big Macs in my lifetime. I'm closing in on 50 years next year of eating them every day. This is a McDonald's Big Mac. It's the best sandwich in the world. When I like something, I stick with it all the time. My habit right now is just to eat two a day, and that would be like 14 a week. The obsession with Big Macs began because, for one thing, my love of hamburger. May 17, 1972 was the day I got my first car. I drove to McDonald's, I ordered my first three Big Macs, went out in the car and ate them, and I said right there that I'm gonna probably eat these the rest of my life. And I threw the cartons in the back seat and uh, started counting, counting them from day one. This is 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on. How I keep track of how many Big Macs I've eaten is for one thing, I saved the cartons, Another thing is I save all the receipts, and I also keep a running count on a calendar. I've kept a running count on the calendar since May 17, 1972, right up through the day, so I can tell you which Big Macs I eat on which day. This is a McDonald's Big Mac. It's the best sandwich in the world. As you see here, you've got your uh, sesame seed bun on the top, first patty, pickles, you have some lettuce, special sauce, and you got your middle bun, second patty, twice of cheese, more lettuce and special sauce, and then the bottom of the bun. And that is your best sandwich in the world. Delicious. Don Gorski did not tell me about his Big Mac obsession when we first met. I'm not sure it was an obsession quite then. He ate Big Macs every day. As a matter of fact, sometimes I would bring him a Big Mac, but I didn't realize it would go on forever. I ate my first Big Mac on May 17, 1972. I was started out eating pretty much nine a day for quite a while. I'm not a type of person that tries new stuff, and when I like something, I stick with it all the time. It's like me, it's Big Macs every day, it's, it's Coca-Cola every day. The stuff that I like is what I, I do every day, and it's just part of the way I am. Uh, people that say that Big Macs are unhealthy, I think it depends on the person. I think well, for most people, if they're unhealthy, it's because they maybe eat too much. Um, for somebody like me, if I eat two Big Macs, and that's pretty much all I eat all day, but I like the fries, sure, but you know, that's one of the things where I feel like I can keep from eating and not gain too much weight, you know, so. But the Big Macs, I gotta have, so that's my main diet. So Don comes into the restaurant quite often. Uh, since 1972, he used to come in once a day and order two Big Macs. Uh, since he's been retired, I think he figured out he was spending more on gas than he was on sandwiches. 
So now he picks up six at a time and eight at a time on Mondays and Thursdays. So we get to see him twice a week. Okay, uh, I probably will be eating Big Macs every day for the rest of my life. Um, the only exception is uh, that Mary once told me that if, when it comes to where she's got to put a Big Mac in a blender that she says it's over for me. <laughs> but uh, I eat Big Macs every day and then when I do go, uh, my boys can write down what, what Big Mac was the last one I ate and they can tell people, oh, this many Big Macs will kill you. <laughs> as far as Don's health, the doctor has said it's pretty good actually. Um, his blood sugar's been normal, his cholesterol has been exceptionally good. I've stayed in pretty good shape because uh, for one thing I'm kind of hyperactive. I, I do a lot of walking. Uh, I like to joke with people that I tell them I, I walk around the block usually, but they don't know that it's six miles around our block. <laughs> okay, I have my granddaughter Serena seeing her first Big Mac ever, and this is my granddaughter Anna seeing her first Big Mac ever. A lot of people that have gotten in touch with me and uh, they've given me their McDonald's collections and you know, just giving me stuff that meant something to them that was McDonald's related and they wanted me to have it. And so, it doesn't matter how trivial a thing McDonald's wise that people give me, I'm going to save it for the rest of my life. Big Mac's always been my favorite food and it's just like, you know, I sometimes people will say, well, what happens if they quit making them? And they aren't going to quit making them. I'm sure this place is like to stay open for me just to keep making them. But i got to thank my wife for being patient with me all these years because she doesn't let it bother her, you know? It's been great being married to her and putting up with all this stuff. It's all part of the Mick family. If you know a little bit about Don, he's more of a, a humble servant with a great appetite for a great sandwich. Amazing. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, so if you didn't kind of have a picture before, I think we have a pretty good picture now of, of what a hunger looks like. Right? I mean, I don't know how that guy doesn't weigh like a thousand pounds, personally. I think that's almost more impressive uh, than the amount of Big Macs he's eaten, is that he's in relatively good shape. Uh, but the point is, though, that this guy, he loves something so, so, so much that no matter what, he's going to wake up every single day and go do it. He's going to go get a Big Mac. And that's the type of passion, the type of hunger and thirst that we need to have for righteousness and for pursuing our Lord. If this guy can go and eat a Big Mac every single day, you know, I think we can open our Bible every single day, right? Um, that type of passion, obviously a little misplaced in him, I would say, uh, but that is the type of passion that we're called to have. So uh, just like the other times uh, that I've spoken, I'm, I'm a big fan of points and um, things to write down. So this morning there's three points that I'm going to give you, and we'll come back to each of these and look at them a little bit closer. So if you don't get them down right now, we will circle back. But number one, lots of things try to make themselves our obsession. Number two, none of those things will satisfy. Number three, Jesus alone satisfies. Number one, lots of things try to make themselves our obsession. So. For the guy that we just watched in the video, obviously Big Macs uh, became his obsession. Not really sure how or why, I don't think they're that good, but that is what he uh, has kind of chosen to pursue, uh, clearly. And truthfully, whatever we hunger and thirst for above all else, that is our obsession. Um, and this is something that I tell the youth group kids all the time and try to impress on them, is that what you spend your time on is what's important to you. At the end of the day, that is it. There is no way around that. You can claim that something is important to you, but if you spend no time on it, put no energy into it, it is not. What you spend your time on is ultimately what you value, and there's no way around that. And so many things uh, in this world constantly are vying for our attention um, and our obsession, and it's not just young people. I think young people are especially susceptible to this because Companies, um, you know, social media, uh, things like this, they know that if they can kind of get people young, they can have them for a lifetime. So young people are vulnerable, especially with things like the internet, movies, uh, television, things like that. But everybody really is targeted all the time. Have you ever watched a commercial for anything? 
uh, or gone into a store for even a little bit of time, received coupons in the mail, um, things are constantly vying for our attention. They want our obsession. They want us to be focused on that and that only. And they're going to stop at nothing to get it. And truthfully, uh, there's not usually anything you know, inherently wrong with having friends or having hobbies or things like that. Um, God blesses us with the ability to enjoy things and have interests and friends. But when we become obsessed with those things, when we love them and we put them over God, that becomes a huge issue. So there's a couple verses in 1 John that I want to go to um, that talk about this in a really clear way. So feel free to turn there with me or not if, uh, if you'd rather not, and I'll read that as well. Um, I'm going to turn there and, and read that rather quickly here. So it's 1 John 2, verse 15 to 17. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Uh, and like I said, this talks about this idea of, of loving things more than the Lord in a very, very clear way. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So verse 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's pretty clear, right? These verses are a reminder for us that we cannot put earthly things above God. If we value something, a possession or a hobby or a relationship, more than we value our relationship with God, then 1 John is telling us we have, a, we have an a serious issue that needs to be addressed. We cannot put anything above God. Verse 17 says, And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. So the world is passing away along with its desires. What does that mean? It means that everything here is temporary. If we put something above God in this world and chase after that and pursue that stronger than anything else, that is not going to leave us satisfied because it's temporary. The world is passing away along with its desires. We can't take anything with us, and you know this. I mean, it's, it's a common theme, but we can't take anything from this world with us when we go to heaven, to perfection. So the world is passing away along with its desires leads us right into point number two for this morning. None of those things will satisfy. None of the things that we could ever put in front of the Lord will satisfy us because the world is passing away. It's temporary. This means that none of the things that try to gain our attention or our obsession are going to last or come with us when we die. The only thing, the only thing, that will matter when we die is this whether we believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again that's it that's the only thing that ultimately we can take with us when we die and the only thing that's going to matter is whether we believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again and the only thing that's ever going to satisfy us before we die in this life is pursuing his righteousness is hungering and thirsting for his righteousness the Bible talks about how our possessions and earthly pursuit, pursuits are temporary in a lot of other places. We would not have time to read them all this morning, of course. Um, and you don't need to turn to these with me, but I want to read you just a couple of these examples um, in the Bible about the, the temporary nature of things of this world. Um, so Luke 12, 13 to 15 says, someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. Listen to this. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. One's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Matthew 6, 
19 to 21. It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That final verse, verse 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Obviously a very familiar verse to a lot of us, I would think. Something we've heard many times. I think another way to put that um, is something that I said earlier. What you spend your time on is what matters to you. That's really what, uh, what this is saying. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What you spend your time on, your treasure, is what matters to you, your heart. Proverbs 15, 16 is the last one that I want to uh, turn to about this idea of, of um, the temporary nature of everything in the world. Proverbs 15, verse 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. So these verses all point to the fact that what we have on this earth is not going to stay with us. These things will not satisfy, and they'll never satisfy us. I love the Proverbs verse especially because it reminds us that not only what we have on earth is temporary, but also that pursuing the Lord and his righteousness is so much better and more satisfying, and the only thing that ultimately is satisfying. And so that brings us to the third and final point this morning. Jesus alone satisfies. Jesus alone satisfies. So Matthew 5, verse 6, again, our main passage. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The second part says, for they will be satisfied. For they will be satisfied. That's a promise. That's from the mouth of Jesus. Um, the Lord doesn't break his promises. He keeps them. They will be satisfied. So the only thing, the only pursuit, the only obsession that we can have on this earth that is ever going to completely satisfy us, never let us down, never leave us, is Jesus himself. That's it. Pursuing his righteousness and striving to be like him and to live like him and keeping our mind on his kingdom will satisfy us. That is enough. That's the only thing. And like I said, that's a promise from Jesus himself. That's from the mouth of Jesus. So we are to seek Jesus first above all else. I mentioned earlier uh, that the things of this world, hobbies, um, pleasures, um, you know, you go fishing, you go hunting, um, sports, whatever it is, whatever you like to do, those are not inherently sinful. Right? God gives us things to enjoy. He's created us to um, have life and have it to the fullest. And so those things are not inherently bad, but what happens is they sometimes become what we seek first before righteousness, before Jesus. And so I want to share a verse, uh, one more verse this morning um, that says exactly that, and then share a quote, um, and then we're going to close. But the, the final passage I want to look at this morning is Matthew 6, verse 30 to 33. So a little bit further along in uh, Matthew, Jesus is still giving the Sermon on the Mount here. <clears throat> so this passage is, um, it talks about not being anxious. So what we're going to see is to not worry about what is coming tomorrow. Um, that the Lord is meeting our needs, that Jesus alone satisfies, and to seek him first above anything else. So it says this, starting in verse 30 of Matthew 6. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore don't be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, hunger? Or what shall we drink? Thirst, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. 
but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So the things that um, we sometimes are, are tempted to put over the Lord, hobbies, passions, things like that, um, those are things that God will often allow us to enjoy in our pursuit of him. God loves us. He cares for us. And like I said, he, he's come, Jesus says, Jesus has come to bring life and life to the fullest. I mentioned this while we were reading it, but I love this passage especially because it references the idea of hunger and thirst. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Those are things that um, God says, you know, don't worry about that. Seek me above anything else. And I will give you those things. Those things will be added unto you. Don't put those in front of me and try to find them on your own. Seek me first. Seek Jesus first. And those things will be added to you. So he wants us to have our needs met. Our needs are met in Jesus. And we often are blessed with gifts that we can enjoy. But we must seek him first and he'll make sure our earthly needs are met. It's not the other way around. It's not let me seek these things and then if I have time, I'll seek Jesus as well. He is the priority. He is above all else. Our hunger and thirst for him should exceed our hunger and thirst for anything else. We trust that he will meet our every need and we hunger and thirst first for the Lord. Jesus alone satisfies. I want to close this morning with this. Um, it's a quote from a guy named C.S. Lewis. Um, I think I've maybe shared a quote from him before up here. I love him. Uh, he's one of my favorite authors. And I just really connect, I guess, with kind of the way that he talks about the Lord. Um, and so in this quote, he talks about earthly desires and how none of them ever seem to satisfy. Um, and this is one of my, honestly, one of my favorite quotes ever because it talks about the idea of, of nothing in this world being able to satisfy and kind of points to there's got to be another answer then, than this world. Um, so I'll close with this. He says, C.S. Lewis, <clears throat> if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation <clears throat> is that I was made for another world. I'm going to say that one more time. If I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. And we are. We're made to be with Jesus. We're made to be in heaven. We're not citizens of this world. We're citizens of heaven. And Jesus alone satisfies. Bow your heads with me, please. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for um, meeting our every need. Um, we know that in this world, lots of things fight for our obsession, for our attention. Um, and we know that none of those things will satisfy us. So we thank you and praise you that you do, that you alone we can find satisfaction in and that when we pursue you above any of those other things you will meet our needs those things will be added to us because you are perfect and you provide for us if you clothe the grass and the flowers of the field how much more will you clothe us how much more will you feed us we're thankful for that promise we're thankful for the promise that pursuing you will satisfy us and Lord, we look forward, as we mentioned throughout the service, even earlier, we look forward to the day where we can be with you <coughs> in perfection. No more pain. No more seeking after things that aren't from you. No more putting things over you. Um, but finally, with you. You know, in your presence all the time. Um, that will truly satisfy us. So we thank you for that. We thank you um, for making a way through your son Jesus for us to be there with you. Um, 
And as we go from here this morning, I just pray that throughout this week, uh, we would remember to hunger and thirst for righteousness and for the things of your kingdom above all else. And um, that we would wake up every day and, and spend some time with you each and every day. And remember that um, you are our number one desire and, and make that true in our lives. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> All right. Uh, like I said, uh, ladies' Bible study at 4, uh, citizenship in Awana at 5.30, and youth group at 6.30 tonight. But other than that, um, you are dismissed. Thank you for being here. Thank you.